Oh, man. Football is almost here. The game is tomorrow. The, the NFL action is kicking off. We're going to cover the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the Dallas Cowboys in real, looking at real football soon. And your drafts are over. But there are guys on the waiver wire that you need to pay attention to, names you should know, guys you might want to pick up, some undrafted gems just sitting there. Go mining for gold on your waivers right now. Make sure you like the video, subscribe, share, tell your friends, and dominate in fantasy. Enjoy the show. Fantasy football season is upon us, and we want to thank today's sponsor, Manscaped, the leaders in men's grooming products and body hair trimmers. They just launched the new Performance Package 4.0. Join the 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped to get ready for kickoff by going to manscaped.com. You're going to get 20% off plus free shipping with the code FOOTBALLERS20. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code FOOTBALLERS20 at manscaped.com. And we want to thank Upstart for supporting the show and our listeners. So many Americans experienced financial hardship in the last year, and Upstart can help you regain your footing and get things back on track. What is Upstart? They are the fast and easy way to pay off your debt with a personal loan all online. So this is a way to pay off credit cards, uh, consolidate high interest debt, uh, funding personal expenses, and over half a million people have used Upstart to get one fixed monthly payment. Uh, they know that you are more than just your credit score, and it, they're expanding. Access to affordable credit. Unlike other lenders, Upstart considers your income and current employment to find you a smarter rate for your loan. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash footballers. That's upstart.com slash footballers. Don't forget to use our URL to let them know that we sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash footballers. Hey, it's Corlin Sutton, wide receiver for the Denver Broncos, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Wednesday, September 8th. Buy, sell on the show today. Fantasy football news to talk about. Some undrafted gems that we'll be talking about. I am uh, I'm very excited for today's show. Don't get me wrong. But if I had that uh that click remote from uh mm-hmm. the Sandler, Sandler yeah. I'd be fast forwarding the crap out of you guys right now. Really? Oh, cuz tomorrow, tomorrow, man. Yeah. I mean, peace out. Today sucks. <laughs> Today's the last day of suck. Today is in my way from tomorrow. What, you guys are looking forward to the game? Tomorrow is football time. Um, as I always uh, <laughs> sing during during the Thursday uh, intros. I, Jason. You're referencing the fact that we got a tweet saying how much somebody is looking forward to your classic football time? That's right. Uh, that's right. It's one of my staples around here. So it's certainly not Mike's. And you're the announcer as well, right? I do. Th- yeah, a lot of people always wonder who does our, our drops that's me. How do you have time for just the regular show with all the things You're you do? You're very busy. Yeah, uh, that's true. All right, uh, a couple things at the top here before we get into buy-sell. I want to remind you, you can head over to jointhefoot.com and join our fantasy football community. You get a bonus weekly episode of the show. Bonus. You get some premium perks. And uh, when is our final Megalobal draft time? I believe that is tonight. So that- you could still get in when you're listening as long as it's not after tonight that is true and spoiler my draft it will be tonight so you could be drafting with me if you haven't drafted yet uh i will be drafting tonight at uh i believe it's seven eastern and foot clan not a pleasant experience drafting with jason just not very yeah pleasant. because you get dominated you did steal a ton of my players in the last two drafts we did happy to hear it uh, we have our weekly show on Green Room, our live show on Spotify Green Room this afternoon, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, all season long. We're doing this on Wednesdays. 
And uh, you can download the Spotify Green Room app. You can follow Fantasy Footballers on there, and you'll be notified each Wednesday when we are live. So that was a lot of fun last week, our mm-hmm. first Green Room show, and we'll be doing it again today. So yep. uh, without further ado, let's do some buy sell. Buy or sell, presented by Pristine Auction. Well, now I'm excited because this is a week one by yourself. Yeah, baby. Uh, and we, we're going uh, three different buy-sell choices here. Are these to choose from, Brooks, or are we doing them all? Doing them all. Okay. Oh, all right. Goodness gracious. All right. A lot of, a lot of work today, guys. <laughs> I think a couple years ago we did five. All buys. right. Five? Yeah. We were younger men. We realized it was too many. I yeah, need- next year it'll be one. I need to hydrate. Raheem Mostert. Taking on Detroit, buy or sell 70 rushing yards in week one. Oh, baby. That's a big time buy, a BTB. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to buy this too. Uh, I mean, first first game of the season, let's, let's uh, let Trey Sermon work his way into the offense. In this matchup, I mean, San Francisco is a heavy favorite already, as they should be, and uh, Detroit – Sorry, Lions fans, it's going to be tough in the streets uh, for this season. And with that with that game script that I am projecting, I think that Raheem Mostert should easily hit the 70 rushing yard mark. Yeah, it's it's a universal buy. I think the Ooh, bigger Ooh, and in sync. Uh, uh the bigger question bye, is bye. will Thank it you. take um more or uh, less than 5 carries? That's honestly to, my question. <laughs> to <laughs> get to 70 <laughs> rushing yards and I'm going to take the under. Yeah, I was going to say, does he get it in the first half? Corey Davis, buy or sell seven total targets against right. Carolina. Yeah, I'll buy seven targets against Carolina. Yeah, th- this one is always interesting because this is what we saw. The question of, okay, what we saw in preseason, is it real? Does it translate? Are there other reasons? Like, uh, you know, we know that the the their rookie pick, Elijah Moore, was not out there. And so Corey Davis was hyper-targeted. Um, I believe what we saw. I think Corey Davis is going to be, even with Elijah Moore on the field, I believe Corey Davis will be the clear number one target for this team. Um, and you have Jamison Crowder, who yes. uh, we don't know yet whether or not he'll be able to get through the, the uh, COVID list and get off in time for the game, uh, but there's a good chance he uh, misses the the first week of the season. Yep, and and for those reasons laid out by Jason, I'm also a buy here on Corey Davis. I think seven targets is no problem. Mike, let's turn to our third buy sell. Logan Thomas, Washington football team tight end, breakout season last year, five receptions against the Los Angeles Chargers in week one. All right, I'll jump in here. This I'm going to sell – this one, uh, despite the breakout campaign of Logan Thomas, he only hit that mark four times last year, and it was all, guess what, Alex in Smith. the second half of the season when the quarterback change had happened. Uh, Logan Thomas will be a fine tight end. The reason that I have been off of him in the, over the offseason is the addition of Curtis Samuel. Now, if, if Samuel... We don't know his status. It's they're being very uh, fuzzy. I don't think he's playing. Being very fuzzy about it. They've kind of said either either he's all in or he's all out. Which I, <laughs> what as in like he's not. They're not going to be limited with him. They're if he's going to go, he's going to be a full time player. Uh, but you know, and just for the reasons of not really doing it last year, I'm going to sell that Logo Thomas hits the five reception mark. I'm gonna I'm gonna buy it. Five really? five on the dot. Yeah, I don't think Curtis Samuel plays. Um. Honestly, Logan Thomas in the preseason looked more integrated into the offense than I thought he would, so I'm going to buy it. Yeah, he he was one of the preseason risers for me. Prior to the preseason, he was pretty much undraftable um, when when I went in uh, to any mock drafts, real drafts. But then watching his involvement, I, I, I think he could be good for fantasy this year. But that line at five, I'm I'm selling. I'm with Mike on this one. Okay, yeah, the odds are in your favor for sure with Mike's stat last year only hitting it four times. Anything he, he, else, Brooks? He dominated four reception games. Did uh, he? Yeah. That may, I mean, makes five is a lot for it a is. tight end in general. So um, I was happy this line was set so poorly. <laughs> <laughs> Made it easy. All right, that was Buy or Sell brought to you by pristineauction.com. 
pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLERS. You'll get a $10 credit. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. Buy or sell Brooks setting the lines. Oh, I'm buying it. He okay. still has to do it. Right. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I know for a fact he does it, so yeah. I'll, I'll buy. Saints have released running back Latavius Murray after he Whew. declined a pay cut. Believe it or not, last year, I believe, was Latavius Murray's best yards per carry of his career. And I believe, yes, uh, best yards per reception as well. They also, the uh, Saints made a transaction this morning to pick up a cornerback. You wonder if these things were connected in the sense that Look, they just didn't want to pay Latavius that much money to be a backup running back when they had Tony Jones Jr., former Notre Dame running back, as a backup option that they were content with. So he's a cursory pickup, and Latavius is he is in the clock tower staring down the barrel to decide which backfield to make a problem. It could be Atlanta. It could be... Baltimore, I guess, still, although they signed Lev Bell. I mean, right. Latavius represents a real problem in the open market. Although for, Lev was uh, – was that practice – just practice squad? It was practice squad with the um, caveat that he'd be called up to active roster as soon as he's acclimated. That was uh, before, though, Latavius. Uh, that promise, well, so, promises are crazy, man. <laughs> promises are crazy. Yeah, the uh, – what do you think? What do you think Latavius ends up, or do you have any? Well, I, I'm going to start with Tony Jones. Congratulations to him working your way up from an undrafted free agent to being in this position, which the backup Saints running back. That's a good position to be in. Uh, we've seen it have success for fantasy football. We've seen it have success for real life football. Uh, Latavius Murray got uh, he got done kind of dirty here, at, pulling up at the the last second to say, "Hey, man." If you want to be on this roster, we're going to need you to take a pay cut, even though the season starts this weekend. Uh, but Tony Jones is interesting. He should, uh, like, if you have a, a six bench league, Tony Jones should probably be picked up in the chance that he has standalone value. He's not just, uh, he might not just be a backup running back. One one hundred percent. I mean, Tony Jones is an undrafted gem. We're not, this is a guy that um, is on your waiver wires right now. If you've already finished your drafts. Um, and he should probably be picked up uh, by half of the teams in your league, uh, probably have a player worse on your bench than Tony uh, Jones, because this is, this is a team that has dominated total fantasy points at the running back position for yes. the last decade. And they're going to need that more than ever. Latavius Murray, uh, you know, had spot starts last year where he was uh, good. And, and the truth is. The, he was cut because of what they saw out of this undrafted r rookie running back coming. He's, he's he has juice. He looked really good in preseason. I remember a play where um, he, he was running away from defenders. This was early in the game, first stringers, and I was like, "Wow!" He I was I I wasn't even sure who it was at first. Um, and then I found the name, and the ball started rolling, and now they cut Latavius. So I, I think he has value this season, even in redraft, not just dynasty. Undrafted free agent challenge. Would you rather have Tony Brooks Jr. or Tyson Williams? Tony Jones Jr.? What did I say? You said Tony, Tony Brooks. Brooks again. Oh, You got a Tony Brooks problem. Who, yeah. is, who is this Tony Brooks? No, no, no. It's, uh, I keep saying Tony Brooks Jones because I swear I read that somewhere at some point in time. <laughs> That his there's a Brooks name. that was part of his name at some point and then has been removed. Are you talking now, about Now Brooks, you're an authority on this name. Do you know where this came from? There was a Tony Brooks James that was a running back in college. I don't know if somehow That is the I am I am crossing those wires. And of course the incredibly famous uh Tony Brooks race car driver for uh, who is British who did the old Grand Prix back in the fifties. Mm. Is that who you're talking about? Let, let me return to the question. <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather – you're putting in a bid this morning. Are you signing Tyson, who's going to back up Gus right. Edwards, undrafted free agent on a great rushing attack, mm -hmm. or are you signing Tony Jones <laughs> Jr., undrafted free agent on a great rushing attack, backing up Alvin Kamara? I mean, obviously, Kamara is the more proven starter of the two. Right. But where are you putting your – I mean, Jason They're, is deciding right I, now. I, I can they see are, it in his they face. Are very, very similar comps. I'm going to go with the team that I think is going to run the ball more 
in the which r- is which is uh, <laughs> the Ravens. I okay. uh, so that would be uh, Tyson Williams. Yeah, I have Williams. Uh, I would slot him just slightly ahead of Tony Jones. But if you're putting the waiver claims in, uh, I I don't mind double up. Yeah, I would I'd put a claim in for both of them. All right, moving on. Lev Bell was added to the Ravens practice squad. The original report, like I said, was that he's going to be brought up to the regular roster, assuming they don't sign somebody else. But uh, Lev Bell, uh, I, th- I don't. <laughs> don't care. care. <laughs> yeah, I mean, people. It hurts me that people care. P- he, this is a big name. This is a fantasy superstar of yesteryear, and people see Lev Bell signing in replacement of an important fantasy asset, this is worthless. Do not pick up Love Bell. Do not play Love Bell. Do not make a waiver claim on Love Bell. He will he will let you all down. <laughs> I mean, do you remember when Devonta Freeman bounced between different teams with the big name? I mean, Love Bell's at this stage of his career where he was given a humongous opportunity. Yes, he was. With the Kansas City Chiefs offense and did nothing with it and showed nothing on the field that made you go, oh, boy, I, I wish they gave him more opportunity. No, what happened over the course of the year was Andy Reid was like, man, Daryl Williams needs to get in there more than Love Bell. Yeah, and while he produced for fantasy uh, for the Jets in 2019, that was just an overwhelming amount of volume. He wasn't, he wasn't good. He wasn't efficient. He just was their number one guy that they paid a whole bunch of money to, so they were going to force feed him the ball. Lev Bell hasn't been good for fantasy football since 2017. Yeah, so don't do anything about it. Ignore it. We Take it out of the news. Cut this all out. <laughs> no, it needs to be in here so we can tell people, don't prioritize adding Le'Veon Bell. All right, Josh Jacobs was absent from a second straight practice on Tuesday. However, however, he will return. Now, why does this report say he isn't expected to return the field to the field on Thursday? It says it isn't until. expected until Thursday. Oh, until. I'm sorry. Yeah, he is supposed to be back on Thursday. Uh, I don't know what to make of this report. People close to the team make me believe it's not a big deal. This sounds like a, a, it's probably a personal off-the-field reason, especially for, oh, he's going to be gone until Thursday, and it's currently Wednesday. So an injured player – the report would be, well, let's see if he gets out there in, in practices. So He was I, named a team captain last week, along with Darren Waller as well. I am a little bit worried, and the only reason that I'm worried is because the Gruden talk fest um, versus the transactions and what they're doing, you know, they, they put in a claim. Was it Royce Freeman they tried to? claim on waivers yes um and then they brought in carry on johnson for a workout they signed peyton barber like i think the carry on johnson is hist- just, it's the backup they list. do have a history of this every off season i mean theoretic was the was this talking point on this show last year it, it's just one of those things where when you combine it with like oh someone's missing practices and we're tr- we're working out running backs it just it it makes the little sure the spidey senses go is there more here Ramondre Stevenson dislocated his thumb last week in practice. Might still be available for Sunday. Might not. Uh, could be a an interesting spot start game for James White in week one if he needed sure. it. Like if you were – let me ask you this. Are you worried enough about DeAndre Swift where you would start James White in that game over Swift? No. No. Okay. Maybe not then. Uh, Chris Godwin, Thursday night game, limited with a quad injury. Uh, there was a report about Antonio Brown missing practice, but later it came out that it was a maintenance day for his knee. I think both of these players will be fine ahead yeah. of the game, but I know the the line is jumping all over the place. Yes, for Thursday night. I mean, you have the Zach Martin news with Dallas. You've got this news with Godwin. Um, but it's going up for Tampa. It's going up for Tampa. Yes. Okay. Uh, so we, we do have Thursday night preview on today's episode of the show. So we're going to talk about this game in detail. So I'll probably just leave those there unless you guys have anything to add. Nope. All right. That was today's news and notes brought to you by sleeper. A reminder, get those breaking news alerts by downloading the sleeper app season starting soon. So you should grab that. Uh, you would have seen Latavius Murray's cut news last Mm -hmm. night and you would have been the first. And then you could have run around the neighborhood announcing it. 
Well, if your waivers were open, you could have grabbed Tony Jones immediately. That's true. Tony Brooks Jones. <laughs> The, the, it was confirmed. There's a Tony Brooks James and there's a Tony Jones oh, Jr. See, all I can and they're both of, running backs. Also, I don't know if you guys realize this. There is now a Tony Brooks Jones Jr. Wait, and that is him. And oh, that it is? is his name forever. What? Because I oh. just declared it. Oh, oh, this is a Darnell Anderson situation. This is a Darnell Anderson. <laughs> I thought you Wikipedia it or something, and his real middle name was Brooks. Still could be. Look, Maybe it's there better is a if chance. we don't. Yeah, everyone's. Yeah, Brooks is confused over there. <laughs> um, everybody's confused now. Let's uh, let's get into those undrafted gems. Well, that's the story of my life. No respect. I don't no respect. All right, these are players to keep an eye on to add to your watch list. They could be somebody that J Jason brought up such a good point yesterday. I love preseason trading because you can do two for ones right now, open up a roster spot, and then add one of these players. You, if you go out there and you you take a couple of players with mysterious futures that you are you're just not sure if they're going to pan out, like one of them, Jacoby Myers. Like maybe there's more value now for Jacoby Myers than there will be during the season. I don't know. People view certain players. Will Fuller. You know, there are certain players that there's a lens that, you know. Five people in your league may hate the guy. Five people might think he's promising for the upcoming year. You can go two for one, pick up a better player, and then go add one of these six players or another one of the undrafted gems out there. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like we could, you know, we're, we're bringing up two guys each, but I feel like we could bring up six, seven, eight guys each. You know, uh, there are so many players out there. Brian Edwards is right. not someone we're talking about today who is available in a lot of Traquan Smith. Leagues. Traquan Smith. These guys where it's like you're going to find out week one what their involvement is, and they either hit and great, you've got someone, or you cut them and have fun with week one waivers. And so my first pick here is Donald Parnum Jr. Parnum yes. Jr. I always throw an N in there. Uh, Brooks James is the, the end <laughs> Donald of <that>. Brooks Parham <laughs> Jr. He's 6'8", 256. He's the tight end for the Los Angeles Chargers. He's being completely ignored in each and every draft. Um, 6'8", 256, 24 years old, 99th percentile dominator rating in college. He is an athlete, and he's stepping into a role that was very valuable last year. Jared Cook got the offseason buzz, but Parham looks like the value to me. He He's stepping into a spot where Hunter Henry went – 60 for 6, 13, and 4 last year. You have an ascending quarterback, an improved offensive line. There's going to be touchdown opportunity for him. I think he scored three times last year just on very limited amounts of targets. So I think Parham is one of the perfect add-ons. Like If you're looking at adding him or kind of an old busted tight end flyer, you get potentially higher payout with yeah. uh, Parham Jr. And, and I'll, I'll kind of piggyback on this for the Chargers. And I like the Parham pick because who is like, who is the number two target? I'm, and I'm not counting Austin Eckler. But it's Keenan Allen is locked in. Mike Williams is – like the, the target percentage is just – it wasn't there with uh, with Justin Herbert. He's, a, he's an excellent player. But will he really ascend to be the number two guy where, where Hunter Henry was seeing, you know, like a 15% target share? Uh, so Parham is in play. And also his teammate, Josh Palmer, uh, the third-round rookie that the the Chargers just picked up. We had Austin Eckler on this show mention his name when when we said, "Hey, who's who could be someone? <clears throat> excuse me, surprising on this third rounder? Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, that's who, great who's someone capital. that could be interesting that people aren't talking about? And he brought up Josh Palmer. Now, Palmer is is he, it's very difficult because for fantasy football, you know. You want to see a good production profile. I want to see a wide receiver in college really do something because the correlation of that turning into a, a, a superstar at the NFL level, there is a there is a high correlation there. And these guys that really don't have a, a profile of any production, Josh Palmer was basically a 500 yard per game uh, or per season player, so it's not there. But the Chargers saw enough. That they took this player in the third round, and I think that he is worth uh, he's worth a bench flyer, 
just in case he shows up and shows out and he is the number two guy. And Mike Williams, this is his final year of the contract, right? Correct. Uh, I believe that's true, yeah. Yeah, so you do have opportunity on the Chargers offense just because of the quarterback position. And they're both very good best ball candidates, too. If you're in a deeper best ball league, you're closing out some drafts. There could be some, uh, you know, they could be free final picks for you. They also had a couple deep threats that have shown well in the past that they, they cut and they moved on from as as a team. And that says to me like Tyron that there Johnson? is – Exactly. Um, that there is confidence in Josh Palmer, who was a great deep threat in college. Um, uh, so I, I really like the Josh Palmer pick as someone to – See if he pops. Um, my my first undrafted gem here is Ty Johnson. Uh, Ty Johnson running back for the New York Jets. A lot was made about Michael Carter. Oh, they drafted him. He was someone that pre-NFL draft yeah. we were hyped for. Rookie running back coming in. Look, he hasn't been used. He's fourth on the depth chart. He didn't play with the first string. It, like, Michael Carter's not a thing. Not um, yet. Yeah, may, may, maybe he breaks in. Maybe later in the season it, it, he gets more involved. But the truth is, running backs drafted after the fourth round or in the fourth round and later historically just don't work. There's like a few examples. Yeah. I mean, might as well be undrafted. The undrafted guys hit uh, about the same rate. Um, and and Tevin Coleman. I mean, we we talk about Lev Bell, right? Like, oh, he's yeah. he's washed. Yep. He hasn't looked good in years. Like. I don't know if Tevin Coleman has anything left to give. He might because we haven't really seen him. He hasn't been on the field enough. He's got you know a lot of in injury history. So this is a guy in Ty Johnson. I I think I think he has more opportunity than what he's been drafted. Do for. you believe more in stashing Ty or Coleman? Because Coleman is widely well, available Col too. Coleman is is mostly drafted in 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 most leagues. If you're like uh you know you draft sixteen rounds, um, well, Brooks is giving us that he's available in seventy five percent of leagues. Well, then you then seventy five percent of leagues have two bench spots, or <laughs> they're going uh they're they're going pretty early. Uh, because when I was looking this up, um, for ADP, he was I think in the thirteenth, fourteenth round, which is okay. usually drafted. But um, I guess my point is. I see a lot of people taking a shot on Tevin Coleman, and I think he doesn't have juice left. Um, now, whereas, he's not in San Francisco, so the injuries could get slowed down. That, that's fair. That's fair. That's Al mean, Borland brought that up. Very um, important analysis from the But Ty Johnson, producer. he averaged seven <laughs> yards per carry in college, and we saw it last year. He had one game where he was given opportunity. Uh, they needed to use him, and he, he went ham. He was you know, 117 total yards. He was the running back seven on the week. So uh, I, I think there's opportunity here. This isn't necessarily someone you need to cut someone for and, and roster him now, but it, I believe it's a name we need to be paying attention sure. to that a lot of people are like, oh, who's Ty Johnson? All right, before we give you three more names, we want to thank HelloFresh for supporting the show. Uh, with HelloFresh, you get fresh pre-measured ingredients, mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. You can skip, That's the, the, best skip part. the trip to the grocery store. Count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, affordable. They're number one. So you got to trust HelloFresh. We've all used them for years, um, occasionally making one another jealous with the most recent recipe that we get. And so, uh, look, the, the fall harvest, Mike, it's officially here. Okay. <laughs> Do tell. Like pumpkin cinnamon rolls. Okay, I'm in. Uh, friends giving ready sides. Oh yes, friends. Uh, <laughs> friends giving. That's right. Okay, they're shareable. Uh, fresh, high quality ingredients travel from uh, the farm to your front door. Go to hellofresh.com/footballers14. Use the code footballers14 for up to 14 free meals plus free shipping. Once again, that's hellofresh.com/footballers14 and use the code footballers14 for up to 14 free meals plus free shipping. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. And Foot Clan, now is the time to celebrate because the first NFL Sunday of the season is about to kick uh, off. <laughs> and DraftKings, who is the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL, is putting you in the center of this weekend's action. New customers can get a free shot and a $1 million top prize with their first deposit by signing up using the code BALLERS. So get in on the action now. It's simple. You just pick a lineup, stay under the salary cap, and see how your team stacks up against competition. Feel the NFL action like never before with a free shot at a $1 million 
payday. Download the DraftKings app now and use that code BALLERS. This week, new customers can get a free shot at the $1 million top prize, compete for millions of prizes across all the contests. Enter code BALLERS for that free shot at $1 million top prize with your first deposit. That is code BALLERS only at DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL. Minimum $5 deposit required. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. All right, let's talk about some other names you could throw onto your roster. Uh, if you are waiting on quarterback and you are playing the game, draft after draft after draft, I am shocked at how late Big Ben Roethlisberger I is love this one. going. So I think you could throw him – like there. there are several leagues where I am throwing a second quarterback on my bench for week one. A couple of the names that I would bring up is so Big Ben's one of them. He has a schedule that look week one he's at Buffalo, but we haven't seen this offense. He's got incredible weapons, and then you got Las Vegas and Cincinnati at home. Yeah, that's juicy. So if you're streaming, maybe you've got a week one starter like Kirk Cousins. Big Ben should be picked up because it could get interesting in Pittsburgh. Baker's another name that I will throw out there. I want to see if I can find a weekly starter or somebody that's a great compliment to who I drafted to start. And I want to throw him on the back of my bench for a week one, just to see what happens. So I think big Ben is that option for a lot of fantasy players. And like, I mean, we're in a, we just finished the best ball and he's, you know, like the ADP for big Ben is below like Zach Wilson and, you know, other options where you're like, Oh yeah, big Ben's down there. And I think he's an undrafted opportunity. We, we give a, a streaming quarterback, or we, we give some options every single week when we're talking about the waivers, and I can almost guarantee that Big Ben is going to be on that list come Tuesday with those week two against Ra the Raiders, week three against the Bengals. So if you are, if your starting quarterback is not strong and you know that you're probably going to be looking for a great matchup next week and you want to get ahead of it, I think Ben is a excellent ad, uh, addition to your last bench. year against Cincinnati at home which is the week three matchup he was 27 for 46 333 and four like Big Ben has those games in him every year mm -hmm. and uh, you know if Mike's right and Chase Claypool takes a huge step forward if Deontay becomes more consistent and is is always open if, if well he has a running back he can throw to again too it, that's very valuable because you're going to get a lot of cheap points out of mm -hmm. that if you can dump it to Najee and watch yes. him go 56 yards down the sideline. And he has the best rookie tight end uh, this season in Pat Fryermuth. So uh, it's just, I mean, awesome the touchdown the opportunity. The Muth is loose? The, yes, for sure. The Muth is loose? We're, we're, <laughs> <Luth. laughs> the Muth is loose. Um, we're going yeah, to yeah. workshop that one. <laughs> the Muth <Still>. is loose. <laughs> what is there to I'm workshop? Sorry. That's gold. <laughs> Oh. Thank you, Mike. I can't wait a for penny a on the tracks. <laughs> a Monday, a Monday pun day when uh, Fryermuth goes oh. goes uh, for two touchdowns. Yeah, two touchdowns. Two oh. touchdowns. <laughs> All right, Jason or Mike, you want to share your second uh, sure. option? Uh, a uh, if, if you're dumpster diving for the tight end position, I like uh, the addition of Parham. Uh, and this name hasn't been mentioned a lot. I think briefly we talked about him when uh, when uh, Adam Troutman was injured and we still don't know the timeline for that injury for the New Orleans Saints but Juwan Johnson uh he's an undrafted player uh undrafted free agent but he has like Parham like he has a certain skill set he's he's a big dude 6'4 230 runs a sub 4'6 and right now like Nick Vanette their other tight end he's on the short-term IR Michael Thomas is gonna is on the pup he's out until at least week seven like who's catching the ball for this team? I know that you know, that Callaway is the sensation of the preseason, but somebody else has to do something on this team, and Jawan Johnson might be the one that steps up. Last year, Jared Cook, a uh, kind of a shell of Jared Cook, commanded a 12% target share. Manny Sanders was 16%. Both of those players are now gone. Where is the ball going to go? Jawan Johnson may be a spot starter for those first few weeks. Can I – can I – kind of move to another Saints related topic that we actually haven't got to talk about. Sure, let's do it. Um they did keep four quarterbacks. I don't know if you mm -hmm, you saw mm -hmm. that. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Uh, 
so I do believe that, like you asked the question, who they're going to throw the ball to? Yeah, and it might. It might be Taysom Hill at tight it end. It might because I think he's going to be used in the Taysom Hill role. Trevor Simeon is on the roster. Ian Book was kept as well, so they can make Taysom Hill active outside the quarterback position on game day and, if and, they want to. Yeah, and he he will be involved. <clears throat> Originally, I did not think when they when they named Winston the starter. I did not think that Taysom Hill would be used in any of those gadget roles, but what they did at quarterback ensures that that, that That's they what are. They're going to do. In yeah. fact, to the to the tune where if if Jameis Winston were to go down mid game, it yeah, might it, not be it Taysom might be Hill Simeon. who is the actual backup game planned. You know because. Taysom Hill might be over in them tight end meetings. Um, so, yeah, that's that's very interesting. And maybe you'll end up again with being able to play uh, Taysom Hill as no, in they, a, we the can't. tight end spot. No, don't. You be well, quiet. Well, he's a quarterback. You be quiet. That was not I am, fair. I am fully prepared to be completely surprised with who catches passes for the Saints in week one, to be honest. Is it Juwan Johnson, like Mike mentioned, he could grab some? Is it little Jordan Humphrey? Is right. it Deontay Harris? Is it Ty Montgomery? It's going to be a hodgepodge of probably no meaningful instructive value uh, as they wait for Michael Thomas to return. Jason can't get away from Ty. Yeah, I had Ty Johnson and uh, Tyson Williams. The yes. We've talked about him earlier this show and over the last couple of days, the running back for the Ravens who has been thrust into fantasy relevance due to the injuries of Ravens running backs. I know they signed Le'Veon Bell and he's on the practice squad again. Tyson would be the guy I would prefer. He is a big back, 5'11", 220, kind of a Damian Williams build. He can catch the ball. Um, and so I, I would, uh, I would certainly pick him up, um, over Ty Johnson, but because we've talked about him, the other name I wanted to bring up is actually the Cleveland Browns. Um, it's funny because sure. I, 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 I'm not one that wants to draft ba you know, backup tight end, or usually draft a backup quarterback, certainly not a backup defense, but next week, the hot commodity on the waiver wire will be the Browns' defense. They're a yes, good defense. Will. They're probably going to be coming off a loss against the Chiefs, maybe, maybe not. But they're going to be playing the Houston Texans. And I have a, At home. I have a strong feeling this year there's going to be a great strategy of <laughs> start the defense against the Texans. Well, what's very interesting about both names that you brought up is that Mike and I signed them in our league of records six minutes ago. Oh, you sons of guns. <laughs> so Mike actually <laughs> spent two fab to pick up Tyson Williams. And uh, the Browns are on my bench <laughs> for next week against Houston. Which so I'm I'm incredibly happy about that. I've mentioned that my league of record team is a full hero RB. I have no idea who my running back two is going to be. The unfortunate part is I I overbid by two because no no one else even tried to get him. Ooh, bunch of clowns in this league. I got uh, since we're talking about our waivers here. <laughs> looks like I was able to snag the Pittsburgh Steelers who are on the waivers in our listener league. Nice. Don't know if you guys saw that one drop. Nope. 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 No, we didn't. Good for you. Thank you. Yeah, but you and I did uh, reject each other's trade offers yesterday. We sure did. We countered and then rejected. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, any other names that we should bring up? I mean, you, we threw out Traquan as well, but uh, any other undrafted I think gems? I think that's a good list. All right. <laughs> Thursday Night Breakdown. We get to talk about yeah. football. All right, the Dallas Cowboys take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The kickoff to the 2021 season. The DraftKings Sportsbook line is Tampa Bay minus 8.5 right now. Over-under set at 52. Tampa Bay was sitting at 7.5 for a while. Okay. So just people getting people getting jacked up yeah. over the Pe Super Bowl champs. People taking Tampa Bay. Okay. Um I did switch mine. You know, I I I was I was picking uh Dallas to cover that. And then when Zach Martin went down and or was unavailable for this week, I 
I was like, yeah, I don't think they're going to be able to keep up with the the defensive line of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers is so strong. If if you got offensive line worries, you don't want to play against them. All right, let's preview this game. Couple of great quarterback options. Whether you're doing uh, you know redraft or DFS, Tom Brady, uh, Dak Prescott. We get to see his return. Thankfully, it's going to be a tough one though in Tampa Bay against a great defense. Tampa's defense was outstanding last year. They were fourth against they were fourth in terms of least points given up against opposing right. fantasy quarterbacks. So 14 points a game was their average given up last year. So that is kind of wild. And it's going to be hard. It's going to be a difficult matchup for Dak in in week 1. So let me start with that side of the ball. Are you tempering expectations across the board? Are you starting Zeke, Amari, Lamb, Dak with confidence. Like, how are you viewing Week One for the Cowboys? I don't, I don't know that you can't. I don't think you can bench anybody from this team. Every single one of these players is a is a high draft capital pick. Besides Michael Gallup, who, it, it, to me, maybe you can mention Gallup as one of those players that should be on the back of your bench. But he's not in play for me in Week One. But Cooper, Ceedee Lamb, these are third round picks. And Zeke is a first round pick. I'm going to temper my expectations for Dak. I mean, we haven't seen him play football in essentially a year. He's still, yes, he's a full go, but he was dealing with that uh, with with his with his injury. Didn't get a lot of training camp out there, so there's there's a reason to be concerned about this, and I think that's why the the line the the DK Sports line is so high for Tampa Bay to to win this game. But I'm still playing everybody. Week one is you don't really have a choice. Week one is very tough to give analysis. Like who should I play? Play the starters that you drafted. Not to mention it's exceptionally fun to have players on Thursday night football with the season kicking off. Yeah, uh, I agree I, with that. Yeah, I was going to bring that up. The reality is, like I'm I'm playing almost anybody I can in this game because we'll talk about this as the season season goes along. The the strategy, the advantage of playing Thursday night players. Knowing, you know, how you're, you know, did you get off to a strong start? Do you uh, need a, a bigger, you know, swing for the fences type? But week one, opening kickoff, like, I want players in that game. Like, this is for fun. I've drafted these players. And honestly, I, I think that they're going to be fine. I, I don't look at this. I mean, last year they were so good against quarterback, so good against running back. I, I think that Dallas is going to do enough here. Um to actually, you know, this is a 52 point over under. Right. So they're expecting a lot of points to be scored and I want pieces so I'm I'm not afraid of starting any of these Dallas Cowboys with the exception of Michael Gallup. We'll see if the Cowboys defense improves. Last year they were 30th against opposing fantasy uh quarterbacks, 31st against wide receivers, 25th against tight ends. You're obviously starting everybody from Tampa Bay that you invested draft capital on. I do wonder if you're going to see a great start to the season for uh, Ronald Jones, running back for Tampa Bay. Last year's RB16, uh, that is been, I think, hesitantly drafted all offseason, yes. uh, maybe due to Fournette's playoff run, due to Geo's addition to the roster. But Brady does so much, and those weapons on the outside are so um, – such a great concern for the defense that someone like Ronald Jones with wheels, big playability can do a lot with a little in terms of opportunity. Yeah. Seeing how these, the running back, at least for week one, because we, we saw it change a lot throughout of last year, but the snap share is going to be extremely interesting, especially Giovanni Bernard, the, the, the new pass catching running back addition for this team who was dealing with his, his own ankle injury, but he practiced fully on Monday. So, we expect to see him. Does does he just become the de facto uh, third down player? Which he played Ronald, every third down snap with the first team in the preseason. Right. So, not that Ronald Jones and Leonard Fournette were catching a ton of passes, but that was still some supplementary work for them. So, if that goes away, if those third down options go away for Ronald Jones and Fournette, that it hurts the ceiling. It, re it really wasn't much, though. No, no, I agree. 20, 28 catches for 165 yards last year for Ro Rojo. But, yeah, I mean, it helps. I, You still wonder what uh, – have we seen the best of Ronald Jones at the NFL level, 24 years old on this offense? I, I wonder if there's there's more to Ronald. Yeah, I mean, he, he is the clear best 
running back on this team. That's at the end of the day, they you know the, the coach might not do what we want to have happen. Geo might be out there too much. Maybe they put Leonard Fournette as the starter this game. That's that's why I've avoided this backfield is because I don't think that you can lock down who it's going to be. And 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 once it looks like okay, it's Ronald Jones. The next week, it could very well, for no discernible reason, be Leonard Fournette. That being said, with a weak defense, um, opening game, I, I do, if I had to place a bet, I think Ronald Jones has a very good game. You know, it's it's crazy. He was a he was a forty two percent snap player last year, right? He played on forty two percent of snaps for Tampa Bay. He only scored seven total touchdowns. Running back 16 in 14. Rushing. He had one receiving touchdown. Yeah. Running back 16 in 14 games. I mean, that's just kind of shocking. A 42% player ends up RB6. It just shows the kind of opportunities that Tom Brady's offense will provide an explosive running back. Yes. And, and when you have a game of 23 carries for 192 yards, you kind of, you, you kind of knocked out 15 games right there instead of the 14 you actually played. All right, uh, Mike Evans, you've got to be confident starting him in week one. Antonio Brown, take it for what you will, which is a bunch of Bruce Arians smoke, but uh, says he's playing like five years ago. Man, the, the smoke emanating from Arians, just his aura. Well, is, he's a very hot guy. He is opaque. Yeah, he's, he's warm at all times. Smoke yes. is emanating from him. Just never it's seen not a, steam, a but it's more actual smoke. Red human being in my life. Uh, he has he has converted <laughs> his skin color is the Tampa Bay yes team, yes. team color. Is, is he like a like a chameleon? I, I he went from the Cardinals to the oh, Tampa Bay no. Buccaneers. This is that's it. This this is all you can do. Or or maybe like maybe the oh yeah you know he's oh, no. the the dye of the shirts is just like when he puts it on it's oh. just rubbing off. I don't know, but. Uh, he, he he just certainly, needs to take a deep breath. Yeah, calm down, it's Bruce. Meditation, Bruce. Um, you just won a Super Bowl. This would be the year where he could kind of be normal color again, right? No, he he will never. He's always like Donald Duck about relax. to explode. Yeah, he needs to go to the Bills. Didn't you know he, what I mean? Like, oh. I mean, he technically quit. Oh, the <laughs> just for the blue. blue yes. Yeah, in the cold. Didn't he technically? I mean, he retired from the Cardinals. He left the Cardinals based yes. on health. Wink, wink. It, was, it yeah. definitely had nothing to do with the depleted roster that any, anyone with NFL ability could see was heading for the dumpster. This team looks like they're about to get the number one pick. <laughs> ah, my heart. <laughs> Rob Gronkowski is starting this one? Yes, yeah. I, I think so. Sneaky. I, uh, I, we, we brought this up, um, but I would rather play Rob Gronkowski this week over Noah Fant. Um, okay. Noah Fant dealing with you know whatever leg issue he's got going on and – what if one of your friends signed Rob Gronkowski so you can't do that? Is that what you did? No, Mike did. I did. I like. I think he's a sneaky start, but O.J. Howard being there, uh, I mean, he's still a uh, tight end on the roster for the Bucks, <laughs> and like Rob Gronkowski, it's it's hard to really track down what like what you know. It was it that he was acclimating to the offense you know he didn't really have a, he had retired and then he came out of retirement to go join the Buccaneers slow start or was that slow start because OJ Howard was around and then when Howard went down with the the injury that's when Gronk really started to flourish in this offense so that's that remains to be seen for me um yeah I mean you guys talked about how much Tom Brady likes Antonio Brown is one of the reasons why you like Antonio Brown this year. That is certainly true of Rob Gronkowski and that connection over the years. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's something to to consider. I am kind of taken aback by something Al Borland, our producer, has alerted me to. Uh, Wait, this isn't real, is it? Apparently, in July, Bruce Arians said on Sirius XM that he had his stomach pump twice as a child for drinking paint. So that could. Have I to wonder do what the... color that paint was. <laughs> Red. <laughs> that was back in 2017. Yeah. But okay. But twice is the real question. Have yeah, you... fool me once. Al is nodding <laughs> like paint. Like He's it's... got some mean yeah. brothers. That was my takeaway. What as made well. you want to return to the paint can? Well, it's delicious. <laughs> I, I <laughs> it's guess a real so. Tommy Boy situation yeah. here. Yeah, it is. Uh, also, uh, kids, don't drink paint. 
If you had, not, if you didn't know it already, don't drink not paint. Not good for you. In fact, that was back when, when paint had lead in it. It was really delicious. Oh, they yeah. took that out, and the taste just went to the crapper. <laughs> um, a good reminder here: uh, the our fantasy footballers DFS podcast. Yeah. If you play uh, daily fantasy, definitely subscribe this year. Kyle bets they're going to take care of you. Um, they have. They have supported so many listeners over the last few years when it comes to DFS strategy picks. It's a great listen. And they're taking it up a notch this year. They're doing a... Uh, it used up to a be, notch. Up a notch. Okay. Uh, it used to be the one show released on uh, you know over the weekend. They're doing two shows a week this year. Ooh. Wow. Also, yeah. Tuesday's show was entirely devoted. We're not devoted. them for that, are we? No, oh, heck goodness, no. goodness, no. We've yeah, okay. never paid them a cent, never will. Um, but yeah, the Tuesday's show was entirely devoted to the showdown game uh, of this matchup. So if you want more insight, more, uh, you know, an entire episode for the DFS strategy of playing this game. Yeah. Listen to Tuesday's episode. All right. That'll wrap up today's podcast. A reminder, you can check us out on YouTube, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. The community is join the foot.com and tomorrow's episode is going to be very special. It's only a day away. Only a and day we'll see you then. Away. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. And Foot Clan, the first NFL Sunday of the season is about to kick off. And DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL, is putting you in the center of this weekend's action. New customers can get a free shot at $1 million top prize contest with their first deposit by signing up using our code BALLERS. So get in the action now. It's simple. Just pick your lineup, stay under the salary cap, and see how your team stacks up. Download the DraftKings app now. Use that code BALLERS. This week, new customers can get a free shot at a $1 million top prize and compete for millions in prizes across all contests. Enter code BALLERS to get that free shot at the $1 million. Top prize with your first deposit. That's code BALLERS, only at DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL. Minimum $5 deposit required. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details.